Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChichaChicken.com here with another awesome Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're going to go over a 3D spacey text effect sort of thing-ish. I don't know. Anyway, um, if you could do me a quick favor and like this video or favorite it if you think this looks cool or if you get something pretty cool looking at the end, uh, that would be really helpful. It's always nice to know that you guys like our videos and all that good stuff. And yeah, I'm just rambling now. So we'll just get started with the tutorial. And we're going to start up our new document. And like usual, I'm going to go with my 1280 by 720 document with a 72 pixels per inch resolution and a transparent background. So once you've got that, and you can hit OK. And we're just going to start off by filling up our background with black and setting our first layer to BG as the title, like usual. And in order to get this effect to work properly, what you're going to need is a set of 3D text. How you get that, it doesn't really matter to me as long as you have it. Uh, I made some with Adobe Illustrator, and this is what it actually looks like in the document. So if you don't have any kind of 3D software like that, I'll give you the link to the PSD file with this Check It. 3D text in there. And so once you've got a set of 3D text like so, go ahead and copy it. And we'll just go ahead and go back to Photoshop and paste it in there as a smart object. And so I'll just check mark that and I'll center it up a little bit better. And I will rename this as backup. Like so. I think I just spelled that wrong. Fail. Okay, so we're just going to keep this, as you know it, as a backup just in case I kind of screw things up later. So I'm just going to duplicate this with Control J, and I'll turn that off, and I will rename this to 3D Text. And so what we'll need to do with this is flatten it so that it's not a smart object anymore. And to do that, we'll just make a new layer, and we'll just kind of merge that with the 3D Text layer to flatten it like that. And so now the next step is to grab our magic wand tool, and I've got a tolerance set to zero and anti-alias and contiguous uh, check marked right there. I never really figured out what that means, but uh, that's no big deal. Um, in any case, we'll just uh, start selecting all of the front parts of the word check it like that. And we're just going to fill that up with black and deselect it. And now we're going to go back to the 3D text layer and duplicate it and rename that to 3D text blur. And we're just going to move this underneath the word 3D text and leave it there just to chill and go back to our 3D text layer because that's what we're going to work with. Alright, so above the 3D text layer we're going to make two new layers and we're going to put each of those into groups. And this group right here, we're going to rename to Color. And this group right here, we're going to rename that to Effects. And the Effects group, we're going to set to Color Dodge. And the layer inside that, we're going to rename that to Clouds. And so with our Clouds layer selected, we're going to go ahead and go to Filter, Render, Clouds. And we're going to bring up the Levels dialog for that. And just kind of change this up a little bit. So I'll move this over here so I can see what I'm doing. And let's bring in the blacks, bring in the whites, maybe not so much. And maybe brighten this up a little bit by bringing over the midtones to the left. And so that's looking pretty good. We'll hit OK and call that good. And now we're set to start adding a little bit of color to this. So we'll go to this layer one right here. And whoops, didn't mean to bring up the freaking wand tool again. That was an accident. So what we're actually going to do is go to our brush tool and we're just going to change the color to a magenta color like that. And we're going to zoom out and make our brush a lot bigger. So maybe like that. And we're just going to add this magenta color in the top left like so. And then change our color to a slightly more red color. Maybe right around there. And we'll put that near the bottom. And then we're going to change this again to an even more red color. So maybe right around there. And we'll put this in the top right. Voila. And I just realized that I made a really retarded mistake. I was supposed to put these colors all on different layers. So I'm just going to undo that and try this again. All right, much better. All of these are on different layers now. <laughs> My bad. Um, so obviously this is kind of getting all over the place. It's a little bit hectic. So we're going to change the blend mode of all of these to soft light. 
All right, that's actually looking pretty good. Uh, now that we've got our coloring, we kind of want it to show up a little bit more around the edges of the word check it and a little bit more in the actual word. So to do that, we're gonna go to the 3D text blur and give that a Gaussian blur. And we're just gonna leave that around 13. If you've got a different size document, that then it's gonna be a little bit different for you, just kind of mess with it. And I'm actually gonna go back to my 3D text and duplicate that, and we're just gonna call this something like maybe Blur 2. And with that, we're gonna go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and not have it quite so intense, maybe put it back down to five pixels or so, just so that the color gets a little bit more onto the word check it. So right around there is looking actually pretty good. We're at about seven pixels. Whatever, we'll just call that good and hit OK. And so now the next step is to start adding little specks of light on the word check it. And so to do that, we'll just go to the word clouds and add another layer above that. And we'll just call it specks. Voila. And we're just going to go back to our brush tool. And we're going to go to a brush set that you can download. And it's just a little star brush. I'll put a link for that in the description. And so just choose a brush, any brush, and make sure you're painting in with white instead of pink. And just start adding in just random brush strokes and stuff with different brushes. Alright, so once you've got your little star brushes and stuff like that added in there, we're going to add another layer. And we're just going to call this abstract. And now we're going to go back up to our little brush dealio, and we're going to go to an abstract set of brushes. Uh, you can probably find a set online, or you can download our set from chitachicka.com. Again, I'll just add a link for you in the description. And with this, you can add whatever you want. Um, let's see. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and use this little guy right here, and I'm going to size him down. And I'm just going to start adding him randomly on the word check it. Alright, I guess I could have been a little bit more graceful with that, but eh, it looks good anyway, so I'm not going to bother with it. And now that I've got that taken care of, I can go off to the side here and close these up. And I'm going to add a layer in between these groups, and I'm just going to call it Gradients. And as you probably guessed, the reason I call it Gradient is because we're going to add a gradient to it. But before I actually do that, I'm going to bring up my rulers, and I'm just going to put a ruler down here at the 50 mark. And once again, at the 50 mark, this way as well. And I'm going to swap to my gradient tool and make sure it's just a standard white gradient and that we're set to this first one right here, just the linear gradient. And so from the top, I'm going to come down to the middle marker right there. And from the bottom, I'm going to go up to the middle marker. And from the left and right side, I'm just going to go to the first letter and last letter of the word check it, or vice versa, kind of did that a little bit backwards. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and delete these rulers and hide my rulers like that. And we're going to set the blend mode of this gradient to hue and change the opacity to 80%. And so if you turn that on and off, you can see that just gives it a nice little bit of contrasting on the edge right there. And so now we're actually pretty much uh, completely done with the word check it by itself, but we're going to go ahead and add in the clouds around it just to add a little bit more effect to it. So to do that, what we're going to do is set this color right here to black, and then we're going to swap this around and make this more of a dark purple like so. And so with those two colors, we're going to make a new layer above our 3D text blur 2, and we're just going to call this... Uh, I don't know, I'll call it purple clouds like that and we're gonna go up to filter render clouds and this is a little too much so we're gonna go to the mask and we're just gonna mask out oops let me reset this real fast there we go much better so I'm just gonna go ahead and mask this out off the word check it and that's actually looking pretty sick right there, but maybe just a little less over here. And that's looking pretty cool. We'll just tone this down a little bit, maybe mess with the levels, and we'll just see what we can get. Okay, so do a little before and after. I, I like that a little bit better just because the, it makes the clouds a little less intense. 
And so just to add a little bit to this, I'm going to go ahead and add a white little splotch on my clouds right there. And just so you know, that's actually on my clouds, not on my layer mask. And something I noticed is that my little fractals are kind of getting all over the place, so I want to hide some of those. So we'll just go to this guy right here, add a layer mask, and we'll just start hiding some of this. All right, right there looks actually a lot better because now it looks like these are kind of coming off of the word check it rather than just looking like a random set of like brushes and stuff. And something that I noticed is that some of my specs are becoming just like pure black. So I'm going to go ahead and add another layer mask to my specs and just take out these specs that ended up looking just pure purple. Alright, now there's only one more thing to do, and that's just to add a little bit of a glow underneath the word check it. And so to do that, we'll go ahead and close up the effects little group right there, and we'll add a new layer above that, and we'll call this glow. And so I'm just going to grab a 500 pixel standard brush and add white there in the middle. And I'm just going to bring up the transform tool and manipulate it in a 3D manner so that it kind of looks like it's underneath or in this case overlapping the word check it in a 3D manner. Alright, so once you've got that set up in a manner that you like, all you have to do is click and drag this just above your purple clouds layer right there, and it will pretty much do the rest for you. But this is a little too intense, so I'm going to put the opacity down to 50%, like so. And now we actually want this not quite so much on the word check it, so I'm going to grab a mask and just kind of brush off some of this. Alright, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a before and after. Let's see. Yeah, maybe not. Here we go. Let's do it like this. Alright, looking pretty good. So that's all there is to this. Um, it turned out pretty well in my opinion. I hope you were able to get something pretty good yourself. And like I said before, if you liked this tutorial and you like how it turned out, please like this video, comment it, share it with others, and all that good stuff. And if you haven't seen last week's tutorial, you should definitely go check that out. It shows you how to make our Chicha Check It logo insignia brush. And also, you guys should definitely check out the music video and Kickstarter campaign videos for Save Your Bullets, and comment them, rate them, all that good stuff. And I've said that line like three times now, so I think it's time to call it an end for this tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time.